by saying I apologize for going a little bit off of, of script, but I feel a bit of deja vu here today because it was about this time one year ago that I stood up here along with my good friend Ron Burberry and, and we were standing before a similar crowd addressing issues that appeared to be pay-to-play politics and introducing legislation that would hope curtail that issue. And on that day, we didn't make accusations. We didn't suggest that any illegalities were taking place. We didn't call for outside audits of offices. We only suggested that the work that we work together with the administration and our colleagues across the aisle to find a solution to protect any statewide office holder from a tax re resulting in any appearance of impropriety. And today we stand here again asking for that same cooperation from the Attorney General's office and offering some very reasonable and proactive approaches for the executive branch to dispel any questions of pay-to-pay -pay politics that seems to be arising. Recently, more evidence has been provided showing the Attorney General's office has awarded lucrative, no-bid state contracts to campaign donors throughout the state controlling board. These contracts told the amount of roughly $24 million in taxpayer-funded monies to firms that have given in excess of $1.3 million to the Attorney General's re-election efforts or the Ohio Republican Party and their endorsed candidates. Even more troubling is the fact that many of these firms are from outside of the state of Ohio, and internal documents from the Attorney General's office have shown that he was deeply and personally involved, meeting with lobbyists and donors to discuss the special contract counsel business and final say as to who was awarded these contracts. Also troubling is the fact that these firms did not contribute to the, the I'm sorry, the firms that did not contribute to the campaigns of the Attorney General were never awarded these contracts. The records have, have clearly show that of the 16 firms that were denied work, 12 of them donated zero dollars, and the remaining four gave less than $100,000 combined. The special process and special counsel, counsel work of the Attorney General's office is an important and integral part of our justice system. As a young lawyer, when I first passed the bar, many of my colleagues, right out of law school, did this type of work in order to gain much needed courtroom experience. But the correlation of campaign contributions to the higher paid contracts is something that we as taxpayers cannot turn a complete blind eye to. It is our hope today that, as, that we as a legislature can work hand in hand with the Attorney General's office to ensure that any appearance of pay to pay politics no longer exists from this Attorney General or any Attorney General in the future. I stand alongside with Representative Gerberry today in introducing legislation that would create a blackout period for campaign donations for law firms seeking state work. This period would do the following things. It would require that a request for counsel be filed by an agency or board through an official letter of the Attorney General and create a start time. From that time, the letter is received by the Attorney General's office that would end at the conclusion of that work. It would prohibit contracts for over $500 from being awarded to anyone who contributed during that blackout period. It would fine violators $1,000 and prevent eligibility for special counsel contracts for one year. And it would, most importantly, it would maintain a publicly available database for appointed special counsel. We would hope that the Attorney General's office and, and Attorney General DeWine himself work alongside with Representative Gerber and myself in implementing these changes to, the to, the, to this policy and protect the office of the Attorney General.